full evaluation of the lumbar spine. In this case, we're going to utilize L2. During the course of the general scan, if you find an area that needs further evaluation, because you're using a broad-based hand contact, your hand covers multiple segments. You usually end up covering about three vertebra, in which case equates to about two joints. So in that area where I need, I need further evaluation as I sprint, I'm going to stop. From here, I'm going to put my finger in those two interspinous spaces, and I'm going to see if I can find the culprit, the one that's predominantly subluxated. To be consistent with Gonset, the first thing we're going to do is look for flexion and extension. Can I have you just fold your hands over your chest if I could, sir? Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to both flex and extend his torso. I'm looking for one of two things. Of these two segments, I'm looking for the one that doesn't open up as well as the other one or doesn't close down any further than the other one. And this is the one I'm going to focus on for the rest of the evaluation. Do me a favor, sir, can I have you just bend forward slowly? And come on back. And bend slowly forward. And come on back. Of these two segments, I don't feel the superior segment is the one that doesn't seem to move as quite as well. It doesn't open it up as, as much. I can look at this being a flexion restriction in this case because it didn't open up. In the Gonstead listing system, this would be the spinous is gone posterior P. To this end, I'm going to look at both right and left lateral bending. Just like in every other joint, we'll look at two things. We're going to be looking for joint play, the freedom of movement between the two spinal segments, and end feel. I'm going to bring the joint to pretension in whatever motion that I'm going to be assessing, in this case rotation, and then I'm going to lightly spring through it to see whether the joint is nice and resilient has a springy quality to it, or does not. In other words, it has a less than um, normal resiliency, in which case it could be a subluxated segment. My segmental contact point, I'm going to take my thumb. I'm going to come to the lateral aspect of the spinous process of L2, in this case of 3. So I'm going to span that joint and span over the inner space. I'm going to assess left rotation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate his torso to the left. What I should feel is those spinous processes should separate as I do this. I don't feel as much separation as I normally expect to in left rotation. To assess end play, I'm going to bring the joint to pretension, and then I'm going to lightly, utilizing my body, I'm going to spring through that joint. Now, I do feel the degree of resiliency when I spring this joint, but I will compare it to the other side. To assess right rotation, once again, my thumb contact is on the lateral aspect, in this case the right lateral aspect, the spinous of 2 and 3, spanning the joints so I can feel the movement between them. Taking this torso, so again I'm going to rotate him. And again, I don't, feel, I don't feel as much separation as I anticipated. And although I feel movement, it's not quite as springy as the left side was. So in this case, I'd say that he has a little bit more of a problem in right rotation than he does in left rotation. So this would be a right rotation restriction. In the Gonstead listing system, this would be now classed as being a PR. To assess lateral bending, since I'm on the right side, I'm going to take that same contact. My thumb pad is going to be placed on the lateral aspect between the segments of both, in this case, two and three. With my indifferent hand, I'm going to laterally bend the torso. I'll be looking for the same two things, joint play and end play. As I laterally bend his torso, I feel a little movement between the, same, the two segments, so I say that joint play relatively is present. To assess end feel, I'm going to lightly use my body spring through. And I feel a little bit of give, but I'll hold off my opinion until I assess the other side, as it's not quite as resilient as I anticipated. To assess left lateral bending, I'm going to come to the contralateral side. My segmental contact point is my thumb is going to be on the, in this case, the left lateral aspect of the spinuses, bridging between, in this case, two and three. I'm going to assess joint play. And now, end feel.
He has more movement, more joint play, and he tends to be a little bit springier in left lateral bend than he, right, left lateral bending than he was in right. So in this case, the final problem that I see over here is he has a combination of a flexion, right rotation, right lateral flexion restriction. In the Gonstead listing system, this would be a PRS. And that would be a full evaluation of a lumbar segment. Flexion extension, right and left rotation, right and left lateral bending.